up next here, ladies and gentlemen, LDLC, BDSA. Who's coming out with game number two? Early game, already starting off, trying to get some vision because, uh, well, you do know, or you do rather want to know where Shio's going to be, especially in this matchup. You do have that early game pressure, some defensive vision on the side of LDLC, so they'll be able to sniff it out this time around. And it makes me wonder that I think we'll probably see Shio aim for plays around this mid and top side because uh, I'm not going to lie, Austin. I, I've very rarely seen Zillion play mid. I got to imagine he'll get pushed into something like the Victor, whose wave clear is non-existent early on. Mm -hmm. And I think that's going to be a big deal, helping set up for these plays potentially on the top side of the map. I'm always interested to see it because I feel like if you're willing to lock in something like Zillion mid, then that means that you obviously put in a good amount of practice with it because there's like little things with Zillion because most of your damage comes away from your Qs. You have to know yeah. how to set up the wave properly so yeah. that you're not missing it on CS. I and mean, this is something that, you know, of all people, you know, Bjergsen in, in the LCS oh, has yeah. spent so many times Time over the years practicing and developing and putting himself in a spot where he's getting the push knows what minions basically need one more cue need one more auto to set up so we'll be watching what he can bring to the table but i am not going to be shook if she could come out here and have a good performance on something like the zillion he's had a good performance on so many different champions so far in playoffs but right. this is going to be another big one here for him as he is a crucial part of this team yeah, and the interesting thing for me is the pathing we're seeing from yike right now where he shows he does two camps he basically three camping right now as the Hecarim. I don't think he's going to go for the gank. That would just be like super unorthodox on this pick. <laughs> but I think part of it is because you're worried about that invade if Shields on this top side and then goes to cross map. Problem is, there's a ward, so he can go ahead and go for the invade anyway. Oh, top lane. Ragnar. Ragnar, level two on the Akali, but it's not done. Look at this. Yike is level two. He's got no flash in Shio. Can't get the last auto off. He already invested his flash. Everybody gets low in the top side, but no one goes down. Yeah, man, that was an insane trade from both sides, but this still benefits a BDSA a lot more because Shio is going to very happily be able to steal away some of these top camps. And look at Yike. He's level two right now, which means he probably lost his red buff in that whole skirmish coming through. Because of that, like he's already starting to get set behind. This split map does mean Ragnar is under a lot of pressure, and that wave stacking you're talking about yeah. is now all already begun. Look who's in the area. So say, Ragnar, how you doing? <laughs> and the jungler's not here to cover. Good trading from Aggressive Vu. Gets him down to half HP. Yep, this could be a setup. So good. You just TP'd. You might lose this wave as well. First blood could come through. Oh, he has Shio no W. tries to set up the play. The stun is so easily done. Aggressive Vu will get the assist, but the wave that is lost is massive. It's so much golden XP or Dote, though. Oh, he is caught. Oh, flashes over the wall. Ignite. And Ika says thank you. Trades one right back yet again. Yeah, and he gets to do that because Yike, of course, is in the area. You New Shiko wasn't there either, so it is a nice response from LDLC, but this is a big deal what is happening topside. This Ragnar, this is unreal. Ragnar has lost so much as a result of it, and it's all from such a well-executed dive. Only question now is, is Doss really in trouble? That is the question, isn't it? Yeah. And Aggressive U, well, I'm sure he could sympathize with Ragnar a bit. He knows what it's like to be in a spot like this. Yeah. And now he's on the other side of it which is going to feel pretty good right now. He should be a full level up right now over top of Ragnar. So you're hitting spikes at a different time now. Level six can come through. You can look for a solo kill on Ragnar. That should be around the time Ignites will also be available for both of the top laners here yeah. too. So a lot of options to play with for BDSA. Another win condition, more or less, rather than just playing through the bot side in the Dragons. Right. I mean, we know Ragnar, a player we highlight a lot as being that player where a very flexible versatile player where you can put him on the tanks the Gragas we highlighted in game one draft and sure. he can play the carries the big damage dealers like the Akali so setting him behind this way setting behind a big player like Ragnar is a good first step here for BDS objectives they're not interested in that don't tell me he's going again to the top side you very well might he's going for the scuttle and I mean this could be the game where you maybe don't look to stack, stack dragons as much because you could just completely take one player out of the game and yeah. force a 4v5 here. Fragger dies again. I mean, this becomes pretty unplayable, but he does play this really well. Shirk and Flip comes through. Junglers are both in the top side, and we'll see Shio come up and just gonna show. kind of say hello. We'll walk right through the river here, clear out some of the vision, but luckily Yike is also nearby in case Ragnar's under threat. Thing is, Yike is down so much CS here. You can already see it's a handful of camps. Shield still has many camps that he can be farming out on this top side. 
because of the vision, they aren't going to go for the play on Taragner, which means Shio's just going to continue farming things away. And because Yikes had to farm to catch himself back up, he hasn't really had an opening to necessarily go for the Dragon. And now if you look at the recalls that came through, bot laners are at equal strength. Chio should reach level 5 by the time he moves to this bottom side of the map. This is something that BDSA could absolutely grab for themselves. Could make a move here for it. Extra kick from level 5. Trying to keep up in the CS department right now. That's crown shot on the Jinx. Seeing how he's going to be able to perform. That is the route. Could be a follow-up, but beautiful lantern. Make sure that he is taken back to safety. Yeah, it's all about that cannon wave and her, uh, the cannon minion. Rodote helps him secure that one nice and easy. So now Yike, who's also level 5, is going to go ahead and have his bot lane help him out with the dragon. The question is, Shio, he's in the area. Oh, he oh, knows. He is. Can he get here in time? 450 smite. He has a shot at being able to seal this one away. Okay, but no, Yike is going to be able to secure it. However, could be a fight here for BDSA as they're actually going to lose the first one. Might lose the second or oh, don't take too far forward. And Crown Shot's going to have to flash <gasps> right over the wall. Das will follow. But now even Shiko has to expend his flash too. This fight goes horribly wrong for BDSA. But maybe a solo kill for aggressive here. The shroud is used oh, well. The Look, shot will connect, but does not have the damage to finish him off. Okay, this one is tough, actually, because now the levels are coming Whoa, through. Oh, my. The level down. Ragnar does he the got him. He play. Got him. Oh, he gets him, and there is no trade. Winning through every single lane is LDLC in the last 30 seconds. And I think that was Triumph that came through, or maybe because he leveled up, he got the extra HP, so he manages to get the one for nothing. No TP for Aggressive Voon. He knows so much happened on the top side, so Ragnar full shoves, gets the re call gets to spend his goal just like that austin he's back in the game wow so many things go so wrong for bdsa and we'll take a look at the first one as we see the dragon spike come through for yike that's right she so good at stealing isn't able to steal this one and it seems like the focus was a little split here for the members of bdsa because of that ldlc exa kick specifically is free to just put out all the dps and start ripping people apart you lose lives summoner spells and that first dragon and look at the Shroud placement here from Ragnar. Just immediately, Hextech ultimatum, fine. I got a Shroud, that's gonna keep me safe so you cannot attack me. Yep. In the meantime, you can't use your stat advantage and then Ooh. the Shirk can flip your beat down. Yeah, that's the difference maker right there. Not even level six like you called. The Ignite and the level up was just enough wow. for Ragnar to be able to walk away with that one. And now we got level sixes on both of these junglers have access to those ultimates. Problem is, Ragnar, who's uh gotten himself back into the game is also has access to his ultimate so bdsa are going to walk away and the neutral objective something that bdsa are notorious for through the first 15 20 minutes of the game yep they have lost two hex tech and now the rift herald but that does leave hex to oh kick down God. here in the bot side all alone hook very close and very well would have been a flash that came through but won't be able to connect and now we'll see Doss right back there with his 80 carry yeah, the recalls are coming through from the bot laners as things slow back down. BDSA are the ones now down a couple hundred gold. And to be fair, we know they're able to catch themselves back up here. And now that they have access to all of their ultimates, I got to say, I do like their skirmishing power a lot more, specifically the chrono shift right. from Shiko being a big fight turner, bringing people back to life. Probably going to be used on crown shot a lot because if I'm looking at BDSA's comp and I'm LDLC, I want that jinx. I want the head on a silver platter. And you're gonna need time for BDSA, it feels like now, since so many things have went wrong. It was a great start with Shio creating some early pressure, slowing down Yike, but Yike's now caught up here with Shio. He has just about the same CS. He's able to find a, you know, a kill and an assist, so he is absolutely okay. Recovery in the top side, and now you even have a kill on your victory. He's gonna have that upgraded laser here. Might have it already or very soon at the very least here. So everything just about going right for the side of LDLC as BDSA will try to do a bit of clearing. We'll use their teamwork to make sure they get some vision down here and see if they might have a shot at being able to contest this dragon yeah. in a minute 30. That's exactly it. It's coming up very, very soon. The time hourglass may not be on the
Dragon Pit, but it's soon, it's soon enough that BDSA want to set it up. And speaking of setups, I see a play in the making. Oh, beautiful flash play right into the knockup, and that will mean that Exit Kick will fall. Here comes Yike, thinking about going in, but realizes he cannot. And that's a nice cleanup kill coming through here for BDSA, finding a nice catch. Yeah, and they have some time, actually, to go ahead and take some of these turret plates. You got about 10, 20 seconds before you want to be respotted, going back to uh, base, rather, as Crown Shot. So that's going to be a nice bit of extra gold, a nice bit of extra income that he's going to be able to spend and walk his way back in time for the dragon spawning. The second dragon could very well be BDSA's. Especially because Aika, of course, he has the upgraded lay. Oh, hold on, actually. All the damage does have the ultimate, though. And now Shio is also following up. That will be the chrono shift that comes in. Shio wants Ooh, to try to get stall. the flash, but will not be able to land the root and the stun. So we'll be able to walk out for free. Aika, though, definitely very dangerous here in the mid lane as he's able to survive just barely. And now LDLC, they look to the bot side. Yeah, this is a, that was a risk for Shiko. He used that Chrono Shift in hopes that he could get into the kill with Aka. That means they're gonna have an easier time picking up this dragon. But now that cooldown, it's not gonna be available, Austin. It's right. not gonna be there for the eventual fight that is going to happen. And Yike still has his Onslaught of Shadows. So you gotta hope Shiko can still find some value out of those double bomb stuns in hopes that BDSA can maybe secure this dragon. But with how things are looking, that pressure on this bottom tower and Shio covering the dive, that might not happen. Yeah, Yike also running a little low on that Rift Herald that was cleaned up a couple of minutes ago. So might be looking at using that here fairly soon. As we'll see, another fight kind of breaking out between the junglers. Just really stat checking each other, walking up. A couple autos will be traded back and forth. Shio also just covering his bot side in case something breaks out. But that dragon's still very much alive. Right, everybody's slowing back down as you say, as we say that though. LDLC are moving up forward here. Now that Aka has that upgraded laser, has that wave clear, it's going to be easier for him to move down and help secure these dragons, help things out if a fight starts. If BDSA can delay this, that Chrono Shift will actually come back, but you see Rodote respawn to spend a little bit of that gold. BDSA, they're just going to have to let this dragon go as well. That's two. And if you look at the total, that's three early game objectives for a team we were just praising. Whoa. Oh. Round shot. Eating quite a bit of damage. In from behind will be Shio, but that's the Rift Trail charge. Plates in the pocket of Yike as well as Exekick. Dragon's resetting. And the Dragon did sort of reset. Oh, Yike Yikes left here. a little early. There is no smite, but it's fine. Oh. Ika will be able to get there at 6 HP. Cleans that one up. Two Dragons now secured for LDLC. Nice and easy. Extra bit of turret gold as well. LDLC, they're only up 1,000. It isn't a substantial lead, but overall, like, everything's just been going their way in these early minutes. BDSA having, losing rather, all these early objectives we usually know them to be able to secure. And now, they still have plenty of time. Like, late game is definitely a friend for them. When you think about Jinx, when you think about Zillion and everything like that, they're going to be in an okay spot. But going behind the LDLC, especially giving them access to a Cloud Soul for something like Hecarim, like a Victor, yeah. that is dangerous. It is. It is indeed. Shio comes to the top side. Aggressive, you're going to help him secure some of the vision here around this second Rift Trail. That'll probably coming up here fairly soon, a minute or two, and it should be alive and available. Of course, all three neutral objectives so far secured for LDLC, and that's been able to at least build up quite a few resources here for them, but it's just a slight gold lead, only about 500, so BDSA can still fight back as you're seeing it right now. Aggressive View going to be able to force out the Shroud. Ragnar understands he's got to be a little careful as Aggressive View threatens the dive, and Shio is going to come from behind too and see if he can zone him away. Right, they have access to the Stormbreaker, so Ragnar is going to have to be careful, but yike is also in the area of something we're going to break out. It's going to break out all right. Ragnar just needs to buy time. And here's the onslaught of Shadow Shio Wait. will be taken down. Ragnar buying time. And Yike will finish it off. One more auto. There it is. Beautiful counter gank from Yike. Oh, beautiful. LDLC, they just keep coming out on top in all of these skirmishes here. Every time BDSA take one, they take more. And that's how you see this 6-2, this 1.5 thousand gold lead that LDLC have for themselves here and it's just these small little things that are going to keep adding up to those later parts of the game you still got a lot of power in the skirmishing in the team fights but as it stands right now they're not going to be able to fight whoa Doss he's actually very low the nice is look. so good from Adote Doss has to eat him up but there's the reset two? the 2v2 outplay Exit kick trying to fight back Does but that? the zap is going to land one or two more should get him a crown shot taking oh, oh ho, ho, ho. 
was so close. The second turret shot does not come in. But what a 2v2 play coming through for BDSA. That is insane. Crown shot and Erdote showing us why we oh. praise them so much in the 2v2, winning such a crucial fight. And that means Crown shot is going to be managing to get this extra gold, is going to take the first turret, even though wow. plates are down. That is still a nice chunk of gold in this Jinx's pocket. I don't know how they do it. Every single time they get away with the first tower, make sure they're out dueling their lane opponents. Yeah. And you see it here again. And I feel like that is just one of those critical moments that could keep you Ooh. in the game. Because two kills are now on Crown Shot. This is the person that you want to have the gold here, Beatdown. This is the person yeah. you want to be ahead. You have the zillion for the protection. You have right. the front line, the protection with the lantern. This is all about setting up crown shot here and finding that kill is really going to be able to help them stabilize a little bit and maybe even help them contest some of these future neutral objectives. Yeah, that's why I say, actually, I'm going to hold that thought. Oh, Shia wants a piece of exit kick now, too. And he might be able to come away with more than a piece, or maybe Exit Kick is going to get a piece of the bear. <laughs> as Udote is going to walk up, and she realizes that actually, no, I am behind in levels versus the AD carry. He has yep. to back up, and this opens up a window for LDLC on the second Rift Herald. That's going to be the Rift Herald. The one I was going to say earlier, too, is that BDSA, they are not out of this one just yet, even though LDLC have been winning out on a lot of these early skirmishes, taking away every neutral objective that's been up so far. It's because of Crown Shot on this Jinx, but Whoa, wait a minute. Oh, aggressive should be dead right here. No flash. Flash, Ragnar Woo. claims the kill with perfect execution, and they will catch Aggressivu slipping inside his own jungle. And that is brutal. Another pick, another bit of extra gold here. And at this point, it is going to be a little harder for people like Crown Shot to be able to play this one out because, I mean, at this point, you have a lot of ways to threaten this Jinx, and it means that this Chrono Shift, once it's out, you can use some of your abilities, some of your ultimates, pop this Jinx. Once she resets, someone like Ragnar can just full send and get in there as well, especially this guy who was down, was at like 4 CS at 4 or 5 minutes because of those yes. dives coming through. Now he's 3 and 1, he's caught up in CS, he's ahead in gold overall, and he's one of the most fed members on the Rift. That's why we always talk about Ragnar. <laughs> he is just able to do it all, baiting out the opponents constantly, buying time, getting towers, building a lead, taking down Aggressivu in the counter matchup. But now, play right on to the mid laner. That's going to be a good flash no over the wall. Onslaught of Shadows now forces Shio into a bad spot, but he does have the ultimate. Chrono Shift will bring him back with the resurrection. Top oh side, 1v1, another one. Ragnar takes down Aggressivu for the fourth time in game two. Oh, this is unreal. The top plays from Ragnar have just been unbelievable. He is just beating Aggressivu at every turn, and he's earned that second Rift Herald to take this tier two turret down. That's more gold for LDLC see as they are con uh, BDSA are continuously falling behind here. It will allow BDSA to get their first dragon of this game, but I think it is well worth the trade. Oh, so much more gold there was collected for Ragnar. And you get a dragon, but it is just a cloud dragon. LDLC very happy to trade that one over. Yep. As Now it's the other hand. It was, you know, at the beginning, looking like Ragnar was going to be completely out of the game. Yeah. But now it's Aggressivu, who is 0-4-1, needs to try to hold off Ragnar on this Akali, and it's just not been happening. I will say, Aggressivu was in a similar position yesterday when he played the Akali into the Trindamir. It was not a great matchup for him. But his whole job in that situation was to lock down the carries. If he can get on top of Exekick, if BDSA find the angle they're looking for, Hextech Ultimatum, you have that Stormbreaker, you pop Exekick before LDLC can take care of Crown Shot post Chrono Shift, BDSA still have a way to fight this one out. It's tough though, because LDLC, of course, up 3,000 gold now, feels like they are ahead at every turn when it comes to these skirmishes, ganks, sure. dives, everything. So BDSA, they need to put they need to put up the pace if they want to catch up. CSing has been pretty solid so far for Sheikra, I might say. 213 right there with him though is Aiko, also at 212. We wanted to see how that was going to go and so far it's been good. It's, it's now a group up of the carries in and around the river. Nothing to really claim for as far as objectives unless you can make a move on that mid lane tower. But there is a very healthy Akali there which is going to really stop you from making a move on that. But LDLC, do they find a window to engage? Yikes, thinking about it, but will not use the ultimate as they just kind of stare him down and walk him out. I'm gonna praise Dote for the ice there. You see the blue, you see the blue smite come through, and I'm thinking to myself, oh man, is he gonna ult? He holds on. 
keeps his life because that wasn't the fight LDLC wanted. And there isn't really much anyone can fight for at the moment here as the Baron only just now spawned. Things have only really started back up. Chico making use of that Zillion passive, being able to offer some XP to Shio to keep him up with Yike in the jungle there, who also was falling behind early and has now found himself a good while ahead. Double lock gets picked up here for both supports on this reset. Now it's gonna help with a lot of the engagement coming through from both sides as we're now at that 20 minute mark. Of course, Baron live and for the most part, PDSA have opted in throughout a lot of their playoff games to make that first move around the Nash or see if they can force that fight, see if they can bait you in. And having tools to be able to keep them protected to potentially enable crown shot. We might see that come through in the coming minutes. But for now, that mid lane tower does stay the priority as it's the 80 carries. More or less the bot lanes responsible for trying to keep themselves alive here. And now Shio also doing a bit of clearing around the Nash. Yeah, that's the big thing. We're still two minutes away from this next dragon. And you can already tell LDLC are that kind of team who would be able to just, if there isn't any adequate vision set up by BDSA. When that next dragon comes up and BDSA try to get it, LDLC just walk their way over to the Baron. Certainly. And that Baron take is going to be something insane here. So BDSA doing their due diligence, trying to see if they can set up for a play. The problem is they might get played. All right, they're going to go on a shield, but a beautiful hook comes through for Adote. Oh, he's that gone. That sets up the kill, but oh, the devourer from DOS might have just saved the jungler, and it does. Nobody can get there to finish off the kill. And once again, DOS going big. They can keep going, though. Oh, they sure can. Right onto the mid laner. I got a lot of trouble. Stormbringer comes down and that's the kill picked up for Aggressive Vu. Five versus four. BDSA want to go again. Hook shot will be flashed away Ragnar, from Doss. But Ragnar, Ragnar, he's fairly low. He gets to go into the stopwatch. He's gonna... And he should okay. be okay. He's able to perfect execution away. I thought he was going to take that shuriken flip back, but he doesn't end up going for it here. No trades. One big pickup for BDSA and it's going to buy them a lot of space here. They get to take this turret down they could threaten the tier two it's not enough to go for the baron but it is much needed gold in bdsa's pocket and we saw it in those fights aggressive being able to get on top of people using that hextech ultimatum oh and four schmo and four austin as long as you can lock people down with that ultimate he's happy with it man these teams so fun to watch yeah just when you think that one of them might just be completely outmatched with the way that early game goes. BDSA just work themselves back in. They slow it they down, do. start working together to be able to narrow this gold lead more and more. Wow. And Nexa Kick even loses some tempo, which is actually critical considering we're 30 seconds away from that dragon. That's exactly it. Now it's going to take him a little bit longer to finish that recall, get himself back on the map. A crowd shot. He's got gold spent. He's sitting pretty. And the rest of the team is able to push out this mid wave, push out this bot wave and continue wow. my god to get so priority close. over that dragon pit and you're gonna see ldlc do some you know some escorting of this top wave some stealing away of jungle camps but if you're bdsa it is worth it you want this soul someone will have to respond to this that is a lot of golden xp that you're seeing bdsa miss out on however i think they might be okay to give some of it over yep. that means that they're going to be able to secure themselves the second Cloud Dragon, uncontested here. No move on to the Baron, no counterplay on the map. LDLC just going to cut their losses and accept they're losing it on that one. Yeah, and this is BDSA, like you said, working their way back into the situation. They are still a bit down. Oh, hold on. They're going to go in, but <laughs> DOS uh, is very far forward hi. and maybe did not think there was that many BDSA members as yeah. Shio does a little bear dance after the kill. A very nice punish coming through. It's going to allow BDSA to very much easily get some vision uncontested, both in and above the river here onto LDLC side of the map. And yike. Seeing if anybody steps just a little too far. Shio knows oh. better than that. Oh, aggressive Vu, goodbye. Yeah. Better scramble like an egg before you get folded like an omelet here, aggressive Vu. <laughs> <laughs> As we'll see Ragnar once again, look for another solo kill. That's a beautiful x take ultimatum, but it's not enough. Oh. And that's the kill picked up for Ragnar. Meanwhile, top side, LDLC also trying to get some work done, and they will be able to push BDSA back. Oh, the throat! Oh, He's gone! Shot down! He has no flash, no protection, no lantern, and LDLC have taken now two minutes members and they might be able to move for the Nash. That's big deal, Shiko wasn't in the area to be able to use the Chrono Shift and you called it Austin. Exekick, even with that bomb, is going to have more than enough health to help rip this Baron apart. Shio, a player we said could steal almost any objective. Is he going to be able to steal this one or do BDSA accept this as their loss and walk away? 
It looks like they're going to accept. This is not their Baron Nasher. This is going to extend the gold lead even more here for LDLC as they're now looking at about three and a half thousand. And it comes off the back end of individual plays. And that first one really being set up from Ragnar. Yeah, insane. Again, now he's five and one on the Sakali. Nobody can match him in the side lane. So whenever, wherever he is there, you're going to have to be able to overcommit. So select many members from BDSA to be able to deal with him. And that's pretty much the only way you're going to be taking this Akali down. He's got the thickest shutdown on the rift right now, Austin. And with that Baron buff in hand, if he picks up any more kills, of course, it's going to just be that much higher as LDLC going to be able to easily threaten two lanes. Aggressive Ooh does use the hook shot to come in, realizes he is safe. A lot of members on the map that you can see here. And that will be a free tower picked up. So. At least you get something back. However, the pressure starting to come through. LDLC trying to take down this mid lane tier one. Yeah, it is a, a been up for a while. It's about time that it was going to go down. You don't want to fight this one. It is not worth it if you're BDSA, but you can already see this gold lead start to grow here. The gold from taking the Baron, the gold from taking these turrets has just been an insane boon here for LDLC. And I like this call from Ragnar. He's Great. actually going to not let Aggressivu split for free. Aggressivu might be able to get this tier two. If he can do that and walk away, that would be a nice chunk of gold for the LDLC, or for BDSA rather. So not too bad. Aggressivu is able to make some moves happen in that top side. Doesn't actually clean up the two, or rather does as it yep. falls now. So we'll be able to at least kind of trade things overall and neutralize a lot of what LDLC are getting with the Nash. So this has actually been pretty strong for the most part, but obviously cannot stay up here versus Ragnar, who is now level 16, beat down two levels over Aggressivu. Two levels up, most XP in the game, and three items to his name now. The Shadow Flame and the Zonia is on top of that Rift Baker. He's incredibly strong. And well, Chico, you better have your finger hovering that R key because uh, <laughs> Crown Shot is going to be in a lot of trouble in these team fights. Being able to keep track of Ragnar is going to be crucial for BDSA because you already know he's going to be looking for these insane angles, these places you never even thought Nikali could come from to be able to take down someone like Crown Shot. Minute 10 now on the Dragon would put both teams on soul point if they're able to claim it. But one last move for LDLC before they worry about that. See if they can try to get some more damage on the tier two. BDSA here to respond. Ultimate comes through. Just a tad bit of damage. Doesn't find a lot of value here. And now they're going to try to commit fully. There it is. Another tower collected before the Baron power play does in fact run out. But this does give BDSA a bit of tempo on the map. That's right. Still, Ragnar with the Baron buff for about 10 more seconds is going to escort this final wave and get that Empowered Recall off because now only thing to fight for on the map is the Dragon and both teams are at two Dragons apiece. But BDSA, like you say, do have that bit of tempo where they get to walk up, do secure some vision for themselves, but they are behind. So getting that crucial team fight is going to be the big deal for them as they have aggressive splitting, threatening that TP play. Yike. <laughs> Yike thought for a second. He's yeah. like, whoa, what's the Jinx doing all the way here on my side of the map? Mm -hmm. But luckily, there is a wild zillion right behind him here to protect him just in case they do go for the dive flight. Not going to happen right now, but now it will be the dragon spawning. LEOC, they are here to respond, and we'll see if BDSA, in fact, want to try to make a move for it. It's only sole point because of what BDSA have selected so far, but I actually kind of like this. They made it seem like they were going to go for the dragon, threatening the mid push, moving into the river because there was no vision, but instead it's Shio who doesn't show onto the map yet. He might have shown as he passed towards the Krug camp, but overall he's just going to be there to hover Shio, in, uh, rather hug Aggressivu instead, stay there so he can escort this top wave and force someone to have to answer it. That's the benefit, picking up some of those earlier dragons so it's not LDLC soul. Love this chess game that we're seeing through the macro right now. Ragnar responsible again for moving to the top side. And as soon as that happens, guess what? Aggressive view back. Shio is also going to back as they move right back down to the bot side here with BDSA. And Crown Shot is going to be able to push out this wave. Still have to play on the back foot if you're BDSA. Down in gold, but you have a bit of time before this Baron spawns. Last one easily secured off the back end of a couple of picks coming through. And since then, BDSA have certainly tightened up, made sure that they've been together. They're not solo pushing alone anymore here through the sides. And that's going to be most crucial because the dive is so insane from LDLC side. And you can see it, Chio playing with a bit of fire, putting 
out, taking out that vision, rather, but you can see it. BDSA, like you said, have set up the sideways really well, so it's going to allow them to be able to contest this mid-push and continue clearing up LDLC's vision. So even though they are behind, again, I've been saying it since yesterday, we got to look down at the carries, and it's Crownshot, who always seems to have a lead on his opponent there, does have that bit of extra itemization, uh, itemization coming through here with the Crit Cloak. And he is someone BDSA play around really well. And we haven't yet seen a chance for Shiko to use the ultimate on Crown Shot because LDLC always catch them unawares. But if BDSA get the fight that they want, this game may not be as far gone as it looks. Ika just picked up the Rabadons here. Devcap now locked in. And yeah, that's the rightful noise <laughs> as it is going to start to hurt. Victor level 16, Ragnar level 18. X to kick down there, level 15. Also three items with a lot of money here that he can go back and spend before this Baron play if he so wishes to. But we are now 15 seconds out. It's been a while since we've seen a team fight as both teams have slowly been scaling up, trying to find their windows of opportunity to pick apart the map. But now they got to pick apart each other as Shio tries to look for the engage. Can't Flash. find it. DP oh, coming in the back line. Good Hextech ultimatum. Dodges out on some damage. Aggressive view does have the ultimate and he will be resurrected. But he's far from his team. LDLC should be able to lock it in. And there is the first one, Ragnar. Ragnar. Will he try to follow? No, he will not. As it will be the pick. And now LDLC, they move back to the Nash. You got almost everything you need. BDSA, though, they could fight here to contest this one. You can't let another Baron go. They are going to try their hardest. And look, Shiko almost has the ultimate back up. BDSA can stall. Another Chrono Shift will be available. Shio, could he steal this? This could be the difference maker. But LDLC, they might be more interested in trying to turn. BDSA are now on the wrong side of the map. Shiko's but the up. Baron is still aggro. 35 HP. Can BDSA try to escape? Aggressive View does have TP. If they can stall out another 20 seconds and LDLC make the call, they have taken too much yep. damage from the Baron. They do not want to flip the objective. Okay, they do manage to avoid the Zap, but look at the HP. They have to walk away. They don't have the ultimates here. The only one available is the Devour and the Perfect Execution. BDSA, they could make the move if they so choose to go for the Baron themselves. They will have the advantage in this team fight. So I think the play is now that BD Ag Aggressive View is up. I think they can start the Baron. Oh, Mega Death Rocket just going wide. Yeah, and having to move back through will be LDLC. Yikes, very low. And now the Baron's down to 6K HP. Will they be able to secure it? Yike going over the wall. He steals it. Oh, my goodness. Yike takes away the Baron. And LDLC now just need to back oh, away. But BDSA are on the chase. But they find absolutely nothing. And Yike trades his life for the kill. But it ends up being so very valuable. BDSA unfortunately lose another Baron as we got an excellent steal coming through from Yike on the Hecarim. That is a trade you take any day of the week. Now BDSA. Oh man, they're in the blender now. <laughs> it's on Max. It's on Max in the blender. <laughs> as right. you're seeing it, this is, you know, a moment where they think they can go for a beat down, but Yike with the clutch steal the at timing. 914. He comes in with the R, he knows the magic damage is going to be just enough to get it under that 900 threshold. Beautiful timing, beautiful confidence from the jungler of LDLC. And now. Well, we might have to see that one again if LDLC wants to secure this soul because even though the Baron has come through for four members of LDLC, the pressure is still in favor of BDSA. Top is start is slow pushing in. Mid is being shoved as we speak. A lot whoa, of pressure on... Oh whoa. my god! DOS gets taken so low. And oh, now the slow, the slow 99%, <laughs> baby. But Ragnar, 1v2, needs to try to outplay this. Stormbreaker comes through, but doesn't land on oh, top of him. Aggressive is slow. The shot is good. Oh, and the no. Resurrect is there just in time. Ragnar will drop. Aggressive is fine. Yike tries to come through, but will not be able to find any follow-up. And that means the Dragon is going over to BDSA. Another back and forth game from both of these teams, Austin. BDSA now three Cloud Souls to their name. And out of combat movement speed might not be in much, but three of them in a row, I think that's really going to start to add up. Big hook comes oh, through. They the got play him. also denies the Abyssal Voyage, so nobody can actually help them. Das is now down for 40 seconds. 30 seconds on Ragnar. And BDSA, they might have a window of opportunity to break inside the base. Pretty tough. Aka has a lot of wave clear, but look at Crown Shot. He's so fed. He's just walking straight up, Austin. Doesn't even care because he's got the rest of his team here with him. That's the mid inhibitor. 
down on LDLC side of the map as BDSA are going to happily walk away with their spoils. They're doing this right now. And PDSA, they oh. might look again. They might look again. Oh, You're it's a bad me. call for LDLC. They, they thought they reset. Exa kick is locked in. He gets a good amount of damage out as he takes down two. Crown shot falls. Shio falls. And Aggressive is left in the base. He'll also drop. And somehow LDLC, their TP, wait, wait, they wait, might wait, go wait, wait, for wait. it. This is it. This has got to be everything. Ragnar's going to get the kill. Chrono Shift is up here for Shiko. Ragnar tries to finish him off, but he does at least get the ultimate out. Still trying to break inside with the oh Baron as LDLC be down. Too. This might be it. Baron has expired, but it doesn't matter. You have enough members. Chico has to go out of his mind if he wants to be able to hold this one down. Maybe the wave, the wave is gone. Enough. He does get some cues on it. He will be able to deal some decent damage back, but that's the he second has tower hold. down. Or don't take it up. They gotta save the game. Wait, do it. Need to hold the line, but LDLC, all they have to do oh, is focus on Nexus and take it down. Back to back heartbreakers for BDSA. I can't believe what we're seeing, Austin. LDLC, do it again.